Hello, anatomists, and welcome to the dissection of a sheep brain with Mr. and Mrs. Foes. Okay, so here we have our sheep brain that we've taken out, um, and you'll notice there is a covering all around the outside. That is your meninges. So the meninges are three layers. Uh, they help protect um, your brain. They have fluid in there called cerebrospinal fluid that helps cushion. Uh, and they form the outer portion of your brain. So the thickest part is the dura mater, and that is what you can see here. So that's really strong, very fibrous. And then your middle layer that you can't see here is the arachnoid layer, lots of space. And then there is a very thin layer on the outside of your brain that you can peel off with your forceps called the pia mater as well. So that pia mater mater is right there really thin. So the first thing we're going to do is remove that dura mater. You have to be really careful especially on the inferior portion because a lot of important structures are attached and you can easily remove what you might want to actually see. As you're removing uh, that protective layer, you'll notice that it goes into this deep groove between the two cerebral hemispheres. That's called the longitudinal fissure. So you can see we're pulling it out there now. Your meninges go down into those deep grooves called fissures. And then as you go to the posterior side, you need to be careful. You've got your optic uh, nerves coming down. You don't want to pull those off as well as your mammillary bodies uh, and your pituitary, you want to try your best here to separate the meninges from that under uh, structure. Okay, we've finished removing the meninges, and now we're going to look at the external structures that we can see here. So we've got the superior view right now, and you can see the two cerebral hemispheres. The left and the right. And on those you have some bumps and uh, grooves. The bumps, the ridges, are gyri or gyrus, singular, and the grooves are sulci or sulcus. This ridging is wonderful because it means we have more surface area where we're going to have neuron cell bodies. We've also got those deeper grooves, like we've already looked at the longitudinal fissure, goes a long way, between the two hemispheres, and then between the two hemispheres and the cerebellum, you've got the transverse fissure, where meningi goes in. Next, let's look at the lobes of the cerebrum. In the front, you have your frontal lobe. You have lots of upper level processing, personality, decision making. On the top, you have your parietal lobes. There you'll have your central sulcus. And so then the group in front of it would be the precentral gyrus. So the precentral gyrus is going to be your primary motor cortex um, for motor movement. And then the postcentral gyrus behind is going to be your primary somatosensory cortex. So like when you have an itch on your skin, when something's crawling on there, it gets taken here for information processing. The next lobe you have is on the sides. Those are your temporal lobes by your temporal bone. And then you have your back lobe, which is the occipital in the rear of the cerebral hemispheres. You also have inside the insula. It's insulated and the occipital does vision, the temporal does hearing, and the insula has gustation or taste. Okay. So behind your occipital 
um, more posterior, you've got the cerebellum. We'll look in there, the cerebellum is important for motor movements, moving out movements, um, and it's beautiful inside. And then behind that, you'll be going down to the spinal cord. Now we'll look at the inferior view. So on the most anterior portion of this view, so you've got the olfactory bulbs, which are sitting right on top of the nasal cavity. So smell comes in, it goes to the olfactory receptors, and then goes into the olfactory bulb, which then leads to the olfactory tract. And in. Next, you've got your optic nerves coming from each eye. And they meet in the middle called the optic chiasm or chiasma. And so information from your right eye goes to the left side of your brain. Your left side goes to the right side. Then, right behind that, you've got your pituitary. So that's really important in uh, hormone production. It'll work with the hypothalamus. And then behind that, you've got your mammillary bodies. So you'll notice with the mammillary bodies um, that they're much larger than the sheep, which is the same for the olfactory bulb compared to human. That's because they're both important for smell and sheep have better sense of olfaction or smell than we do. Then next you'll see the pons, part of our brainstem, leading down to the medulla oblongata to the spinal cord. Now we're ready to cut in. So what we'll do is we'll do a longitudinal cut down the longitudinal fissure from above. One interesting thing is if you don't start with the scalpel, if you just start to pull apart uh, the two hemispheres, you can see the connection between the two hemispheres. So, trying to pull it apart. Doesn't come. There we go, we're starting to pull. Keep going. So you can see that white connection point that we just ripped um, that connects the two hemispheres. That's the only part that goes between the two. That's called the corpus callosum. So now we'll cut through using our scalpel. We can cut through our cerebellum as well. blood vessels we're cutting through. The brain of course is highly vascularized, has a high oxygen and sugar need, produce ATP, continue functioning. have our sagittal view, specifically mid-sagittal. So let's point out again the corpus callosum, that connection between the two hemispheres. Long white line, there we go. And below that you've got the fornix. So the fornix is the output from the hippocampus for memory. And you can see that between them there's this thin sheet. That's called the septum. So if you poke through the septum, that septum divides two spaces. And pull it all the way back. So that space is a ventricle filled with fluid. We've got your lateral ventricles. There's a beautiful view of that lateral ventricle. We've got three ventricles. The first two are the two lateral ventricles. Then you've got the third ventricle. And then the fourth. Okay. And that you'll have cerebrospinal fluid moving through there. And then around the meninges down around the spinal cord as well. Okay. So now let's look at your diencephalon, which is the thalamuses. The epithalamus, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. So the largest of the three is the thalamus. 
it's the relay station. Um, it's incredibly important for information processing. Epithalamus, epa is above, is right above it with the pineal gland, right there. Uh, pineal gland makes melatonin for your sleep-wake cycles. And then below the thalamus, you have the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a neuroendocrine organ, which is important for lots of homeostasis, uh, including body temperature. It has your thirst centers. It also secretes a few hormones to the pituitary gland and tells the pituitary gland when to secrete. You can see the pituitary gland is large below. And then just superior to that, you've got your mammillary body. Now let's look at your parts of your brainstem. So your brainstem is that lower level unconscious functioning. So the closest to the thalamus is the midbrain. Then you've got your pons, which sticks out inferiorly. Pons means bridge. And then below that, you've got your medulla oblongata. Perfect. And then you've got the cerebellum with this beautiful branching called arbor vitae. Arbor means tree, and this does look like a tree. And now the last cut we're going to make is a longitudinal cut, or excuse me, a coronal cut, or frontal cut, so that we can see the inside of that ventricle, and we can see what the inside here looks like. So probably the most prominent feature you can see is there's some areas that are lighter in color, some that are darker. And the edges are dark. That is your cerebral cortex. That's where you've got your neuron cell bodies doing processing. The lighter portion is white matter. That's where you've got myelinated axons. So the darker portion is gray matter. The lighter portion is white matter. The edge is cortex, and because we've got those ridges and grooves, the gyri and sulci, we've got increased surface area for more of those neurons for processing. And then we can see inside our lateral ventricle very nicely. Great. Thanks for watching and have a great day.